<laughs> Whoops, and now I'm thinking, do I have lipstick on my teeth, darling? No. Do I have a microphone? Yes. Okay, okay. great. Right I suppose I should have gotten ready before. But what's the fun in that? Oh, I don't know. Hmm. Well, it's somewhere over there, darling. Oh, good. Okay. She's going to do it. We're making Bronte and Co. <laughs> it's me. So, um, after looking at how excellent the quality of this live stream video is, and seeing how it shows everything so clearly, every freckle and every, well, look, I don't really care about the wrinkles, but, and then just every part of my 53 year old, you know, <laughs> non-maintained self. Well, that's not true. I do maintain. So I decided to actually you know, just just not let the side down. The side being women of my age in our fifties, because we do like to actually look a certain way. Just not. Hello, I'm happy. <laughs> the seven seven. I don't know if you can call it Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs anymore. Is that the right term? Ooh, I, I think know. it's Snow White and the Seven Vertically Challenged. People because we don't know it could be non-binary and I am not actually please I'm not having a go at anything here well, that's right. it's just that how do we you know anyway um so this is the feed thank you I forgot to mention that food for thought so this is another one of the lives of our days um many uh shows that we have we have the daily egg and then we have Finalysis, which is our reviews of favorite television shows and movies, etc. And under that comes our comic book reviews as well, comic character reviews. And uh, so please do check that out if you're here. You know, come back. Don't go. Not just yet. But afterwards, go and check it all out. And what else do we do, darling? Outside broadcasts um, and um, talkabouts. talkabouts where we go walking. Oh yeah, R and B days, which is our roller roller skating and basketballing days, and it's always, you know, quite busy. Quite busy, yeah. And this is the feed. This is the cooking side of things because, look, everything is connected, right? Yes. I don't know what I'm going to say. I never know what I'm going to say. I'll just sip my coffee. Dwayne Brews Arabic inspired coffee. I say Arabic inspired because it's, um, you know, it's got spices in it like cloves and cardamom and it's, um, it's brewed in a traditional Omani kettle from Oman that you can, it's not just for show, it's actually one that you, you know, brew stuff in. Like, I don't like things for show. Like, I do, like, women will understand this for so many years and I don't know if they still do it. Pants had non pocket pockets just no pockets because pockets can tend to ruin the line of clothing so from that point of view I do understand but also no we like pockets women love pockets pockets and dresses women are like yes <clears throat> pockets in in women's clothing is a is a feminist thing so look feminism right um from the ages of 11 to about 50 one, I have called myself a feminist. Oh, apologies for the sound of the kettle, but it's necessary stuff. We are in Studio K. Long-term viewers know what that means. Oh, yeah, that's correct. But I'm talking about. But I have, um, I've taken, I've taken steps far ahead, and while still absolutely being whatever the ethos of feminism is because that is what woman is human is and that is what feminism says that it's it's in no way misandry but sadly in some ways it's misogyny so feminism may not be about hating men but it has become about segregating women and I, as I started to recognize 
more and more the misogyny that is contaminating women. I had to also look at things that are normally, uh, that are seen as solidarity. But anyway, look, this is just like, uh, it's already gone into the deep end. We'll get back to all of that. Um, I am very, do not mistake what I am saying for some sort of, you know, becoming an apologist for the patriarchy. No, I'm just, I'm just gonna like, just not voice my um, w emphasis words, just in case, you know, I get beat down. But anyway, so Dwayne is making Rorty. I will take you closer, dear friends, because Rorty is our staple bread for Indo-Fijian food in Fiji. And there's ghee being used and all, and, and all sorts of um, other things, which look, I think, I think hot water is an ingredient here. Um, so we're, we're from Fiji. So our food is different to what most people know Indian food to be. Indo-Fijian food is, um, is earthy and it's a, it's a mix of what the ancestors brought with them or took with them, sorry, to when they were, oh yes, when they were indentured laborers. <laughs> you know, no, of course, they were not slaves. They were paid one cent a year or one shilling or one penny, whatever, whatever. Gosh, anyway, look, look, uh, we'll get into all that later. But so this afternoon on the feed, what are you making, sweetheart? Roti. Yes. Uh, I'm going to make pumpkin curry. Pumpkin curry. And potato and bean. No, <gasps> potato and bean. And I've got a little bit of um, cauliflower. Cauliflower. Over, so... Like three different curries? Well, I'm going to add that to the bean. So Yum. it'll be a nice Ooh, wonderful. potato thing. Your bean curry. Seriously. I don't want the cauliflower to go to waste. I love, and I, as I said that in yesterday's Daily Egg, I love that you are zero waste, that all the food gets used. And this is when Dwayne said, so am I. And I'm like, in what dream did I cook <laughs> that Dwayne thinks that? But um, you're talking about everything I do in around in our surrounds. Now, for those of you who don't know me at all, which like, look, let's just face it, that's a fair chunk of the 8 billion. Um, I don't cook. And that's not because I can't. And I'm, um, well, I can't. <laughs> well, I can't. Why can't, can't I? Because I was never expected to cook as a child. Now, I am an Indian woman. I am an Indo-Fijian woman of, um, you know, Indian ancestry born in Fiji. And uh, it is sort of the thing, especially for Indian women, to be expected to cook. Yeah, nah. I've been breaking those, you know, expectations from the moment I was born. And I blame my mother for that because my mother was <laughs> just absolutely... She's my god. And I, you know, she never expected me to do that. If I didn't want to... And look, there is not because... It, I, I, uh, I ha haven't got any memories. I have wonderful memories of my mother being in the kitchen and anything I wanted to eat, she would just whip up and have all these, you know, like, like, oh my gosh, and all the cupboards opened and blah, 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 blah. And there you go. See, mm -hmm. it just happened like that by magic. But also because, and for, again, this is strictly for those people who do know my origin story, <laughs> my background, and that um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a little bit of trauma involved there. And, um, well, I was compared, and I think it was about 10, and I was compared to um, other girls who were the daughters of a misogynist woman who was trying to, who did undermine my mother. Um, anyway, and so the, um, the man who was my father... He said, well, why can't you cook like these young, young, you know, these young girls? I'm like, Psh, that's all they can do. Well, I didn't actually say that. I said that in my mind. Um, <laughs> but in my mind, it was like, Psh, that's all they can do. I do need to um, emphasize that I think cooking is an art. Not, I don't think. I know cooking is an art. It's a science. And I absolutely understand it from 
um, the flavor point of view, the chemistry point of view, the artistic point of view. I just don't wish to cook. An interesting point you made was that most food critics can't cook. That's right, yeah. And I think that that is a very um, integral part of being a food critic because if you cook, and something you said about fine dining too was interesting, darling. Yeah. About uh, the fine dining, fine dining chefs making for you know people who can't cook but expect the the wealth of flavors. Well, yeah, I can't. I can't even remember what I said. This is this is the problem. This is the problem I have. This is the problem we have because we'll have out. You know, but these are just windows into our lives. Hence, the lives of our days, <laughs> and. We talk about everything and anything all the time. But when Duane has made a point and has said his piece, or not that it's an argument, no, as in, as in we, we both contribute to a conversation, uh, contrary to popular viewing, it's not just 95% me and 5% him. When we're conversing, it's 90% me and 10 no jokes. Um, it's about, you know, 50-50, 60-40, whatever. But it's a bit more even... Uh, but when Dwayne, ha when, when you do that, then you expect, now when we're here, you rely on me to convey. Absolutely. I mean, you say things, but I, ah. I, I don't know. I just... There are certain things that I really, and this is what I was getting to, that I um, have to shush him. Like, shh, don't say anything. <laughs> because I know that if I don't, he won't. And I do think one thing is necessary here. Mm -hmm. I think it's important for men to hear you and see you and when you and when you speak i don't because this there's always this thing because i am such a um i'm not i'm not sure if it's dominant or or um confident or no people will see it as dominating right, right. so the assumption there is that well she wears the pants and that's why she's always talking and, and like <laughs> no that's of course coming from people who i don't know can't put the pants on guys right i don't know it's i truly know and those are who uh, long-term viewers and regular viewers of the lives of our days and especially the daily egg know that this is how i feel that um man has been given the physicality to protect women who are the purpose of this planet and we us evolving from how we evolved. Gosh, I feel like I'm in a new, I have to like say everything that I have ever shared on the Daily Egg again. And it's really like, I understand how you feel because I'm now, can you guys just go and watch all the old episodes? Because I really don't want to have to really, you know, say all the things that I say because as I, as I talk, mm. I flow and I grow. <laughs> so we evolve and we move forward and then we've unpacked something and it's there. Unless, of course, I, I get a fact wrong, and I have to correct that. It's, I'm very pedantic about that. Um, I think I had said that in the Daily Egg yesterday, that when truths change, so do facts, and vice versa. Um, but I think truth has to change first before the fact does, because we base fact on truth. Would you say? Absolutely. Right. Sorry, you're focusing on that, but I just yeah. need to... Um, so why I'm saying is that... Um, you know, males especially who are very, uh, who, ha who lack stability within themselves will sort of see this as a, like, you know, yeah. why is she talking? Why does she have to speak for him? Why is he sort of that thing? Yeah. And completely misunderstanding the dynamics of a relationship. And that another point that you had made is that in the animal kingdom and that in the, in all the, the myriad of species the male is always the peacock yep the one that um literally when you're a peacock <laughs> it has to impress the woman that's right and the woman chooses them yes but there's a power imbalance here because it's still about that males still feel they have to impress the woman mm -hmm. but then it's to gain power over her it's to gain power. It's to impress. It's all, you know, it's all Buddhism and, and feminism and, you know, all that shit at start. And once they're in there, they're like, oh, listen, the stronger the woman, the better their guys. Oh, my gosh. Anyway. But um, so I, that's what I'm saying. It's why I really think it is important for you to some of the things you say are just just 
the insight and and you you know from a cis hetero man's point of view sure. who is you know we are equal partners i am woman and you are my man and as a woman i don't want a doormat misogynists want doormats regardless of gender misogynists want doormats i'm a woman i want a man and i am talking in binary terms but I'm talking in binary energy and we happen to be binary energy in binary bodies but you can it's non-binary vessels have binary energies everything is binary you, you cannot disregard that binary is what is required for progress and power look at your power buttons on anything that zero and one is binary and together it's power but anyway so Going back to that, my darling, I feel it is important to, because you are, <laughs> you know, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, and other, my, and friends and viewers have, have said that they, women especially, really feel the, the security, the trust that you, you radiate. You know, you don't, there's nothing, there's nothing that you do because there's, you don't put your expectations on anyone. You don't put your ego on anyone. You don't put your emotions on anyone else. You are just you, you're in the present moment and um, you take people for how they are. And very few of us actually do. We put our own expectations on other people, our own judgments. I'm not saying any names, coughs under me. Um, anyway, look, that was before, like five minutes ago. Uh, da -da -da -da. So, <laughs> and I think that that is a very, um, that, is, that is a wonderful way to be because women, women need trust. Our trust has been broken. If you have, a, you know, the, the woman energy, women's trust gets broken on a, a, a daily basis. So look, we can, you know, every second. Women need trust. Men need love, not judgment not prove yourself women need trust like we need to be trusted and we need to feel 100 percent trust we need to know that someone has our back and so often women betray each other on this one and that is sadly because of patriarchal constructs and what it, the requirements are and i'm going to talk about one thing because i was talking about like, oh gosh i looked at my um face right um on the daily egg yesterday the first time we went live on youtube and it's like, uh, ah, well, look, that's me. I'm 53. That's what I look like. But I also do look like a bit of a fox. So let's not get that wrong. <laughs> uh, let's understand one thing. I do have vanity. I was given the gift of physical looks. I have worked uh, professionally as, you know, I'm an ex-model. So I understand that my physicality was deemed, um, what, an epitome of uh, beauty in the society we grew up in. So I'm not going to waste time and be false modest and I'm also not going to be greedy and then exp and, and I'm also not. Look, I was lucky in one thing that I think because I don't consider looks a, 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 a question of luck. It's a responsibility having physical looks. It's a responsibility because I see beauty as a draw card and not the actual be all and end all. I see beauty as something that signifies that there's something else within that person. And this is where all the, uh, am I allowed to swear? Surely by now, well, 18 it, minutes in, I can swear. It's not for kids, right? So, no, it's not. And you can swear on all the other ones. Like oh, do I? Yeah. Well, but this is a live though. This is live, so I don't know. Um, excuse me while I gulp. Uh, <laughs> that I'm sure you can do. Mm -hmm. So when I say the greedy thing, okay, I, and lucky thing. I was lucky that I, uh, I was not, I didn't, re oh, gosh, I used my looks as what, what, currency, but not commodity, you know, oh, but it wasn't, it wasn't to, to, um, oh gosh, look, I don't know what I'm saying on this one. I've said so many times before and I've talked about it, but I really still have a little bit of nervousness on YouTube because now sure, we're in the yeah. big leagues, you know, not, it's not just Instagram, my account of only, what, 3,000 plus uh, viewers. That, that's, that's small fry. 
Uh, and I have no wish to be an influencer, please. I don't want to influence you. If you're so easily influenced, I really, I really, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a, what am I? Uh, um, a, a think instigator. <laughs> you know, what, what, what do you call someone? An introducer, a, um, an instigator of thought. But I'm not an influencer because I do not want to influence anyone. I but hmm? I don't know what you would call it. I don't I don't like um and I understand defining, you know, definitions. People like don't label me, blah blah blah, but okay, but all these people who don't want to be labeled and go and label themselves all these labels. Like right, people who can't decide you know, uh, preferences then then become queer or and I'm sorry, again, I absolutely understand this generation's need for because they have a lack of identity but anyway we'll get to that another time we're still talking about beauty i find it absolutely greedy of um women like the supermodels of the euro stream and other celebrity women who get to their old age and still want to look young as if youth was what made them relevant rather than their merit skill and talent having said that let's say let's take someone like madonna into account madonna's 60 something and she's touring and look she's an older woman but no one is berating you know strolling bones um and uh, and the rest and and you know paul mccartney like sit down you already earn like a squillion dollars a minute what the hell that's because entertainers have to entertain so if we understand that about these old guys, who the hell is giving Madonna so much hell about it, everyone? And I, um, I have to confess, I, I don't really, I can't necessarily look at her and think, oof, you know. But the other side of this is, would people be willing to accept a 60-year-old woman looking like a 60-year-old woman and still being all sexy like Madonna is? Because Madonna is always going to be Madonna. She's Madonna. You know, she's never not, she's, she was, why should she stop? Why is she supposed to be someone's grandmother now? You know? Sure. And it, that's fine to be someone's grandmother, but why does she stop? Why does she need to stop being a woman and herself? She's an icon. She's, a, she's one of a kind and she should be allowed to be whatever she wants to be because she is still Madonna. But like, you know, Paul McCartney, grandpa, and it's like, okay. That was me strumming a guitar, obviously. <laughs> I'm not having a go at anyone either, but why is it okay for these guys, these old guys? I'm, 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 I'm come down to what she was before. So when she was younger, she was, a, she was sexy, right? That mm. was part of her image. But for the guys, what? Were, were they yeah. just rock stars? Yeah. They didn't have to be sexy. Mm. They just had to rock. So they didn't have to do... Yeah, because that automatically made them sexy. The things that women had to do to be... But Madonna is a superstar. trained dancer, yeah. for starters. And she was never necessarily a singer. But she had started playing drums with a band in New York sometime in the 70s, right? Yeah. So she's always been an entertainer, a performer. Yeah, but what I'm saying is women have to do other things right. to, be, to be noticed as a superstar. But is it something we have to do or is, so or is it something we can do? Because, frankly, watching a guy be all sexy is like, boring. Sorry. You know what makes a guy really sexy? If he doesn't try. Women, it's not that they try, it's just that they are. Like, you, can, you still have uh, yeah, sure, rock, yeah, rock okay. stars who are women who don't have to be. It's just a genre. Yeah. So pop requires um, extra oomph or something. It's something extra. Pop is a different category, a different genre that requires, because back in the 80s, hello, all the pop stars, male pop stars, wore makeup. Yeah, so who were, who were there any rock chicks back then? And were they sexy? Joan Jett. Right. Was that uh, sexy? Melissa was Etheridge. Sexy? Yeah, they're all sexy. Sweet, so. uh, Chrissy Hind. Yeah. You know, but they were uh, rock stars. So yeah, they were, oh gosh, I mean, so many. Who can I, oh gosh. Think of more, more, just there's lots and lots. But, okay, forget what happened back then because it's now. Why should Madonna be any different? Yeah. The other side of it is like what you're saying though. Does Madonna think she's not relevant if she's not still what people expect of her as Madonna? 
Madonna has always been famous for uh, the, the evolution of her image, her different personas, etc., etc. Then it really would have absolutely smacked people on their, you know, on their asses um, if the evolution was it is okay to be old and hot. Yeah, well. Because it is it is hot to see, but still even even um, women, especially Euro women, are you know all doing the grey hair stuff, etc. And it's seen as a trend. Um, but I'm still not necessarily seeing. I'm still seeing this. Um, what am I saying? I don't know. Look, I like. I like dressing up. I, I've always liked dressing up. I, I was born dressed, you know, kind of thing. And I love being, um, what does sexy mean? I don't know. This is not getting so into when, this so one. So when, when you were in your modeling mm. era and stuff, did, were you have, does, did you have to be sexy? Was that part of your, and so is that okay, different but then, now? Yeah, okay. First of all, I really love that you didn't say prime. Right. I really love that. That's, that's, that's not your prime, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely in my 50s, I really feel like, oh, now I'm ready. Whether, the, um, you know, now with 53 years of experience and life and wisdom. I think prime has <laughs> got to do with your mind. Sure. And I don't know if that ever reaches prime because yeah. it is the pursuit of knowledge that keeps us intelligence. Mm. Uh, keeps us intelligent. It's knowing that you're never going to know everything that keeps a person in, in you know, thirsty for knowledge and information and, and, um, and never ever putting a periphery around thought. That's, that's, that's sexy. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so now back to your question. Well, what is so wrong with, you know, with, for me, uh, as I had said, I was a feminist, and for me, feminism for me meant that I could be everything. Right. That I, I really do. Um, I'm. What am I saying here? For me, feminism was never about making a choice about what you wanted to be. A woman can still can be a um, just not just. I'm sorry if I said that or um, preface that with a just. You know, a woman could be a housewife. Mm -hmm. Uh, what does that mean? Because there's still a lot of work to be done in the house and, and have children, etc. which, you know what, one pregnancy done, that's it, work done. I mean, I, I have never, I have never wanted to be pregnant. I have never wanted to have children. Uh, I find it repulsive. I think pregnancy is a, a disease of the body. It is actually, that's why the body you know, tries to get rid of it until, of course, it is meant to be. And after that, it is then a woman's choice if she chooses to have that child. Oh, it's not a child. It's a, it's a, it's a cell that is diseased. <laughs> I, whoopsies, here come the assholes. Um, having said that, I absolutely am in awe of women who are pregnant and give birth and, you know, worship. And I think, wow, that is incredible. That does not make me see, you know, myself less i th i think i am a goddess i think all women are. i think women no, not goddess because goddess has become such a word like oh you goddess i was like really mm -hmm. okay <laughs> but women are gods women of if not gods then god and various manifestations of it on creators. this planet creators absolutely but oh boy that pisses a lot of women off too who really don't want to hear that uh you know <laughs> there's a lot of women who really have a patriarchal mind, a patri uh, uh, they, they're apologists for the constructs. And I have to tell you, there's a lot of men who are also confused about their roles because they don't view women as just somebody that they have to lead. It's like, Whoa. but then those men are very baffled by what society requires of them, right? Yeah. And then there's the others who just want to be led themselves. So I don't know. This is, a, this is, this is perhaps why scripting is necessary. But look, this is not what this is about. I'm so tired of processed productions. I'm so sick and tired of edited and scripted shit and reality TV, which, you know, a whole room of writers sit down to script. And then editors 
because everything is in the edit. Everything you see is in the edit. And uh, in the path of the royalty. Oh yeah. Dun, dun, dun. My darling, that is rather excelente. Hmm. Okay. Gosh, we have gone all over the place. Well, not we, I. <laughs> so, but in answer to your, but that original question about what it felt like. So, background for those that, of you that don't know, back in the 90s, uh, I started off on radio and then I got discovered as a model by the legends of in industry in the country of my birth. And then from there, I became a jazz singer. And um, after that, I was then, well, I was writing and doing a few other things, but I was also one of the first newsreaders on tele uh, television uh, in, uh, in the country of my birth. And I was still modeling. And it was, it's quite interesting to see that suppo in a supposed conservative country, but Fiji was not conservative back then. Unfortunately, colonization has done its work, but it's Christianity that has now taken away the spirit of evolution in Fiji. We were very progressive. We were able to do things. Um, and it was seen as, wow, you know, look at what people can do. It, was, it wasn't... Um, and I, I found a lot of comfort in being seen as um, weird. <laughs> when you're considered weird, you get leeway to be like to be creative freely yeah, sure. so i was seen as a very credible newsreader and whilst also and i used to wear a sari and this is i guess i'm going to segue into what we are talking about here really this the start of it has just been all sorts um i wore a sari to read the news because well i am of indian ancestry and the background uh, of the newsroom of the studio was a traditional uh, bark cloth uh, and uh, of, of our of the country of our birth you know um, a pa the patterns the Marsi tapa and I it's it's a solidarity to the I am of this country because this was fresh not so long after the coups that rocked our nation and that's not to say that uh, the country of our birth has always been paradise well, it's always been a paradox, really. But it's a magnificent country, a tropopolitan is how I describe describe it. And it is it is suffocating under its own constraints. But we won't go there. We're gonna talk about all the good side of things. So yes, I um I never I didn't ever get judged either or until people sort of said, Hey, is that right? Until the Euro white people came in and said, no, we, we, you can't do that. But no one in Fiji, well, not or hardly anyone, unless there were detractors, and let's face it, there's going to be detractors for, as long as there are people who can't do, they're going to detract. Um, so, but it wasn't until the Euro whites came in because uh, to establish, you know, a, new, um, a proper television station is, is when everyone went, oh no, uh, you can't have someone doing that. So they're the ones who brought in their uh, limitations. Wow, okay. But prior to that, I was a credible television newsreader, one of the first faces, uh, visual faces. I'd been on, you know, in media for years before that, and I had proven my credibility in so many ways, and, my, and um, not that I needed to, but, you know, uh, I was just allowed to achieve. And... You know, wear dental floss on a runway, dental floss masquerading as bikinis. But we did. You know, that's just. And when, and in in front, you know, it were um, fashion back then. Well, in our country, was exclusive, but not necessarily elite. In that, it was accessible um, and of a high standard. And there's a lot of things. Oh, now that is a perfect puffed roti. Look, I may need to cut this. <laughs> um, sorry, I gotta go. Um, so, you know, I was, but yeah, it was until the, these, the Euro whites brought their um, limitations in and they didn't, just didn't want. So they, they, they then chose very conservative people who were cures for insomnia, as far as I was concerned. It's like, I don't want to watch the news by someone who is deadpan like this. Good evening. I am blah, blah, blah. To this evening's news headlines are... Ah, 
what? I want someone who really, really believes and knows and oh my God, anyway, that doesn't matter. Maybe I'm just, but having said that, please do tune into One Take News. We, st we just still haven't quite established which day it's going to be because uh, it's supposed to be Sunday. There's so much happening on Sunday. We're freelance creatives. We don't stop working. Uh, there's no such thing as weekends for us. We just take, uh, you know, um, hours uh, in a day sometimes to just to recuperate. Um, so, yeah, that that sexy thing. Oh, gosh, look, there is always I rebelled. I rebelled against it. The needing to, um, but women are sexy and I can't, yeah. I can't, you know, discount the fact that I, I had the privilege of looks, which people think is what sexy is. And that's not what sexy is. It's, um, in youth, what people think is sexy is just the electricity of youth. And that's when we, you know, figure out who we are. And that's what I'm saying I was lucky for because... I um, grew up in such a way that I understood my privileges and I understood that privilege gives you opportunities and when you get given opportunities you make you you try and make uh, the most of them because so very few very few people have access to the opportunities that privilege gives you so when you have them you utilize them um, and I also grew up uh, materially privileged Please do not let that turn you off because if it makes you feel better, I also grew up in extreme trauma. So, um, you know, just whatever. So I was never going to lead with the trauma. And um, for 51 years, I kept it all inside me. I imploded two years ago at 51. And um, I think I'd, I, I say it this way. I think I did well. And that's just not a way to uh, talk about these things. So if you're young, do not let that trauma fester in you. It's, it's not good. It's not good at all. Um, so uh, going back to looks, right? So I didn't, it wasn't a, a trading thing for me. My looks, my sexuality or whatever, my, my sexiness or whatever it is, or sensuality, whatever people. It's not, it wasn't a thing to trade. It was a, it was a, it was a tool. It was a skill. Yeah. I used my physicality to, uh, as a model to draw attention. And this is what models do uh, back then. And this is why the supermodels existed because they had a skill. They used their physicality as a skill. It was a skill to draw attention to what they were wearing. And therefore the, you know, people uh, took, uh, sat up and took a, you know, was like paid attention to all of it. Now, it's not so much the skill, it's all about the looks. Now, in this, in this age, it's all about the looks, which I'm going to just, um, I keep saying that I wouldn't just segue into, into what this is all about, but I'm just going to touch very briefly on something I saw on Instagram yesterday. Um, I, on the Explore feed, and I don't know why this came up on my Explore feed, because with all algorithms, what you seek is what you will get, or what Instagram will, you know, vomit up for you so i don't look for these things but it, it came up onto my explore feed and it was um a young brown woman getting uh, like she couldn't be more than 22 23 but she was getting injected with fillers um creating what's there's only one way to say it you're a white nose uh, I'm not going to say Caucasian because people get that wrong. Caucasian does not mean you're white. Southeast Asians are also classified in very archaic terms, uh, Caucasian and the rest that go with it. This was a philosopher in the 1700s, I believe. I can't remember his name. European, German philosopher who um, classified people according to the way they look. And Southeast Asians, anyone with certain angular features, were also then classified as Caucasians. So Caucasian does not mean you're a white. But, okay, so here we're going. So this young brown woman was getting, um, by a woman, a doctor, uh, who is a, cause uh, obviously, you know, she's a, a doctor, she's a medical doctor, and they're, uh, they're the ones who are the best people to go to if you're going to get all that stuff done. But it made me really sad to see this young woman 
she she got her nose done and it's it's a very you know the other side of it is that everyone gets it done quite freely no one's sort of um because everyone wants so desperately to be like each other there's no individuality that there's no shame anymore in showing that well i think older women have a shame younger women don't younger women are like yeah it's all just makeup you know so getting your nose and your cheeks and your troughs and your lips and your what a, and your jaw, is, she had all of that done, is no longer seen as something to hide, that you weren't born with all of the natural stuff. Now it's just seen as embellishment like makeup is. Because, you know, um, so what did I do this uh, today? Just not today, just, just as I went on, I put concealer here, you know, because um, I was, uh, well, whatever, just to just to lift up the eyes, I put kajal on, a little bit of mascara, just like a little bit of, you know, a little bit of enhancement. I like to accentuate, but we still like to, <sighs> look, I don't subscribe to the, to the construct of flaws, but we still, uh, I like to accentuate my good points instead of, hide what society says are my flaws flaws anyway going back to this um instagram post so and i i wrote there like um why i it's quite you know it's quite sad i don't know i can't remember what i wrote but the why and then instagram actually deleted a comment of mine a really long comment i made about and not judgmental. I'm just saying as a 53-year-old woman, it makes me very sad because I feel older women have failed younger women. Sure. Because older women have been so afraid of aging because of how society has made old women feel about themselves that our only worth is in our looks. That as women have gotten older, especially celebrity women, not naming names, okay, what the fuck I'm going to. Uh, well, the Jennifers and the Naomi's and, you know, all these women of the world who cite olive oil and hide behind supermodel status to hide their fear of being irrelevant. And they base their relevance on youth when I don't think so. You know, Naomi walks out onto a runway. Well, game over. It's that runway is Naomi's. And you cannot discount La Lopez and her, the, the fact that she has been a superstar for 30 years, but olive oil, is anyone buying that? She has a skincare range and then she says that olive oil is the reason why her face looks that way. Mate, mate, mate. Anyway. So, eating olive oil? Oh, applying olive oil, which, which I'm very much a promoter prominent of oils for faces. I, I've talked about this before. Put oils on your faces, gals. <laughs> um, and that's why us uh, oily skinned and brown women, and I'm, an, I'm Indo-Fijian, you know, I, I'm an Indo and an Islander. This, this is not going to, well, it is actually a little, but that's got to do with hydration and the fact that I've been, you know, I, most of my life I've been baking underneath the sun. Um, but going back to, I feel responsible for changing the mindset of younger women. It is scary that Gen Alpha now, they're starting with, with, this, with the cosmetics and all that at 10, 11, woo, woo. And, we, and girls have always liked to play like grown up. We've always liked to have fake makeup. I remember having fake you know, makeup stuff and we've always liked to watch mummy. And you know, we've always like sort of crept into her wardrobe and you know, taken lipstick off her dress, etc. things like that. Women, yeah. girls do, um, but I was also like with my lightsaber <laughs> and you know bow and arrow too i was a, i was i was a multi-skilled jedi okay bow and arrow and lightsaber and mom made me like you know dresses with pockets so i can put my stuff in <laughs> so human beings you know it's <laughs> anyway back to what i'm saying about being an older woman and uh, the responsibility I am taking upon myself to be fabulous, hot, it, which is subjective. So, you know, if you're going to come here and watch this and you feel like you're not hot, you're ugly. Trust me, I've been called that to my face and I'm like, eh, okay. Because if you think that, see, I, being called ugly is not an insult to me. <laughs> anyway.
It's like being called a curry muncher, muncher or whatever. You know, it's like, mate, I am. I am. I'm a curry muncher. That's what we're doing. We're, we're curry munching. We, you know, munching we're munching curry here. So, yeah, I'm a curry muncher. All right. <laughs> it's just... Um, so I had, had said that why are we not addressing why young women feel the need to change the way they look instead of changing the way they think. And that's going back to something that you had sent me that real, that uh, Will I Am, the producer, singer, composer, had said about the, uh, the, the squillions poured into artificial intelligence and what? Maybe a dollar put into human intelligence. <sighs> I guess humans, I think human beings are tired. I think everyone's really tired and it's like, oh, just go with the flow. Everyone, you know, they tried, they've, it's individuality has been stamped out. So now everyone is aiming to look the same. So I, uh, this doctor, and she's, you know, um, very articulate. Uh, I looked at some, and uh, very, very attractive and, you know, is um, a person of color and um, all that and she put all of that in all that virtue signaling like as a, as a pock I, he I help other pock blah blah I'm like oh gosh that's misogyny and that's kind of racism so you're saying that because you understand how difficult it is for, for brown women you're going to make them Euro white looking to help them fit in <laughs> well that's Layered, man. Very layered. I, it uh, terrifies me that no one's asking why. And it's not just, it's not just about the way women look because as soon as, as soon as, like, and don't get me wrong, I, I can't, um, but I think that perhaps the face should be allowed to age before it's not. I think that a face should be allowed to settle into what the mind is making it feel because our skin being our largest organ absolutely uh, is the um, the screen for who we are but we're now using sc literal screens as our skin you know filters and, 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 and putting plastic into faces etc as I said I'm in my 50s so there's a certain frown line that I get here that I'm like mm, it's making me look like a cranky old librarian nothing against librarians I do love you all but I don't want to look like a cranky one, <laughs> you know, but the one peering over my glasses and that's why that's happened. I love all the other things on my face. I am aware that I am looked at as being genetically blessed and therefore how dare you. But for that reason, then I, I won't, you know, I, I, but why? Why is beauty now seen as something that should be everybody's right? When beauty is already everyone's right but a, a physical beauty as i said earlier i feel it is really a messenger for something else and the problem happens when people don't cultivate their minds to create the foundations of that physicality of that beauty of that gift of that that privilege and so when people age and the beauty all of a sudden goes not that it doesn't Beauty doesn't go. It's just that people are younger. So women get older and they think they're no longer beautiful. Uh-uh, it's because they're comparing themselves to the younger women who are now, oh my gosh, it's a never-ending. Look, I really should just go straight into this now. So we've got rorties happening because this is a very convoluted conversation. Not really, but I really do need to just focus on that one subject. I know many women who um, look amazing and uh, because I, my weakness and I, in a platonic way are strong beautiful women so I do tend to you know attract them uh, and just it's it's not the physicality that makes someone beautiful because I also know supposedly physically attractive people who are ugh, ugly and the more you you base your worth and your beauty on your physicality the less beautiful you think of yourself and the more, you know, the more you do to make yourself beautiful, the more you will continue to do. These young women who are starting now, 
you know, to, uh, to do all of these things, this young brown woman who now feels so confident. That's, why is confidence seen in the mirror? Why is the worth seen in the mirror instead of the value in the mind? I'm not saying that no, people don't have a right to be attractive, but people have forgotten what it means. So if people aren't hiding behind the layers of their lack of identity, people hide in themselves. And that physically shows. And then they're, they're injecting things. And as I said, look, you know, I'm, I, but I'm in my 50s. I think I've just, I, I have earned the right to, well, we've got new things available. I don't, I don't like this bit. I'm going to get rid of it. Well, you can't see it right now because I'm probably hydrated. <laughs> um, <laughs> because that's the other thing, by the way. If all of a sudden you see a bit more wrinkles in your, drink, 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 drink water. We do not drink enough water, which reminds me, I really should drink a glass of water. None of us drink enough water. We moisturize. We do all sorts of things on the surface, but we don't do enough inside. Not to our minds, not to our, you know, hydration needs. So we'll talk about that some other time. Perhaps I'm going to just talk about it alone here. So, but we were, we mean to talk about the intelligence of looks and the privilege of it. So I would like to have a conversation, but I think we'll do that for our podcast. Yeah, sure. By the way, we do have a podcast, Radio Fly. Find it. <laughs> or I think the links are in our description. So now we're just, you know, just going to okay, time out of this conversation and we're going to go. But it is the feed, food for thought and food for everything else. So now Indo-Fijian food, Fijian food uh, is different to um, Indian food because why wouldn't it be? The indentured laborers, aka the paid slaves, paid, um, they were from all over India and they were lied to and they were not they were not of the educated socio-economic demographic groups, for want of a better word, because unfortunately we've got to put the caste word into this. Ugh. I'm sorry, I ha but the whole world is run on this caste system, except they call it class. I, I have uh, mentioned many times before that I don't like the word classy being attributed to a woman. And I get called that quite um, a few times and I will take it as the compliment it is intended to be. But I take, uh, it's not, I don't take umbrage at the compliment, but I take umbrage at the definition of this word. Because classy is based on a Euro white woman's behavior, born to high, into high society, born to, you know, whatever, the aristocratic classes so classy is is a woman who knows the etiquette and behavior and and basically acts proper fuck that <laughs> that's classy um so yeah but anyway we um how do i always just anyway so we are talking about how this food became the way it has and how when even though and again, we'll talk about the history of all of this another time, but there's quite a lot of information coming out now because Indo-Fijians are perhaps one of the most displaced racial groupings in the world. And a lot of people will take umbrage at that because I don't know why, but no one wants to talk about the fact that Indo-Fijians are really, well, where is their place to call home? We all feel Fiji as home, but, and my husband is tri-racial and still feels, and he is part indigenous, but still, you don't feel you have a right to... Yeah, I never have felt that because of the way I look. Which is hot. <laughs> okay. Um, and well, I, I, I think I, I look more Indo-Fiji than I do anything else. If I was, if I'm, when I'm in Fiji, uh, Indo-Fijians talk to me in Hindi, straight up. My husband is tri-racial and can only speak English. <laughs> Understands quite a few languages, though. So, um, and look, you know, English is really a global language. Hello, it's not exactly English because let's face it, neither are the actual English English. They're really mostly Anglo-Saxon, and then we throw in the Norman thing. I don't know what happened to the Jutes, but you know, they'd certainly um, kick the original Britons off their land. And uh, no one really knows where the Germans came from, really. 
but all their tribes took over the British Isles. And up till about 19 whatever, 17, uh, something like that, the, uh, the British royal family were known by their German name. And I think uh, this, this, all of these children, because Philip, you know, the doddery old twit, who was Elizabeth's husband, is more German than anything. But uh, the language English, it is a lingua franca, and, uh, but it is a, a mix of, of languages from all over the world, um, predominantly German and Sanskrit, and Latin still wants to assert its arrogant head. Um, so this is why the pronunciation of words are very different to the way they're spelled. So anybody in the world can learn English. It's just when you uh, to by mimicking it, and you know, uh, and uh, all that. And of course, accents the world over are changing. The more tourism has become prevalent. So now you have kids in Asia who speak with American accents and uh, street kids. You know, because they're used to uh, should, uh, street kids. That should not even be a term. But anyway. Um, so, English, they learnt English. Now, um, for those of you who know a little bit of the Indian indentured labourer, um, you know, movement, the, um, Girmit is what it's called. And now Girmit was just a misheard word or a word that could not be pronounced by people who couldn't speak the language. They had to sign the Girmit. Girmit sign Kallo. Agreement. <laughs> and the... The Girmits were born. I don't know our family history. I, well, I, not, not Dwayne's, but I don't know my family history. I know that my uh, mother's side weren't necessarily from um, that because there were a lot of in people of Indian ancestry who went to Fiji under false pretenses, but of their own volition. Um, but I guess you could say the Girmits, too, Girmitiers too, but they were lied to more blatantly. Whereas the, say, I'll say the ones who were educated, the ones who had skills uh, or, how do I say this? Like the teachers and all of those people, you know, they were told that it's a great life in, in Fiji. You know, the, the indigenous people of Fiji are just are waiting to welcome you, um, blah, 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 because they had to educate the girmit, uh, the indentured laborers, you know, they had, because they were having children, they were having things. Oh. I don't know how they were survived or the, oh, it's crazy. But let's talk about their brilliance. Let's talk about how they formed a language. For a long time, Fiji Hindi was seen as a, uh, a less than language or a slang language or a, um, a pigeon language. Well, I guess it is if pigeon is uh, you know, being able to take from other places, but uh, other languages. But it's a, another uh, very, I'm skipping, I'm missing out on terms here in my head. Um, a language of all of India. You know, people brought their languages, people, um, a fusion. And they, because it was a language born from people who were not educated, but were smart, because, I'm sorry, education is very, very important, yes, but that still doesn't guarantee intelligence in people. Intelligence is, you either have it or you don't. Uh, and especially now in this day where a Eurostream's institution, institution's qualifications are what deem you intelligent, I assure you, many of us have met many, many people who have done degrees and we've gone, how? <laughs> I've been told by Anglo Fijians that I'm smart because I speak English well. Yeah, me too. And then I've told them, but you speak two languages. <laughs> I know, they don't, just don't get it. Do <laughs> this is uh, that makes them smarter than me, I think, you know. Going back to, then if I'm just going to skip back into um, uh, my radio and television days, mm. that privilege of the way I sound, mm. you know? Yeah. Having said that, Fiji back in those times was quite colonial and quite a few, uh, everyone really did have a British inflection. Prior to independence in 1970, people born in Fiji technically are British subjects. People born before 1970. Uh, so... Yeah, so it was the way I sound, you know, people then immediately gave me authority sure. where people older than me would kowtow to, but not kowtow, but, you know, get, because I spoke like this and I was on television and I'm like, 
mate, you are twice my age. I respect your, in, you know. Yeah, sure. It, it's, it's really crazy. Fame changes people around you. It doesn't necessarily change you, but then people, because it changes people around you, and then you choose to have people around you that are sycophants, really, and that's what changes the person who's famous. You've got to really choose who you associate yourself with. Anyway. Um, so going back to what you said, yes, so people assume that because you can speak English well, mm. you're intelligent. God! <laughs> and, uh, well, for me, that has always been the reason why I have liked my mastery of the English language, because of the way it's seen. So if I'm going to speak it, I'm going to out-colonize the colonizers. So. When I am amongst people who, uh, who think that they're superior based on the fact that they melted out of a glacier 7,000 years ago, hello, and lost their melanin because they were going to die, I become more British. My British, I don't, my British accent becomes, you know, which, which I haven't lived anywhere near England <laughs> since childhood. But uh, I then was in India and then I was in boarding school. So, England. And every single other country has been colonized. <laughs> so. And uh, Australia back then too. I loved the Australian accent back then in the 80s. And yeah, it's alright. Yeah, it's alright. <laughs> I do love that Australian accent. I love that you have it because you went to school here as well. Uh, you know, um, studied here. So it, you picked it up. But going back to this. Now, roti is the bread of Indo Fiji food, Indo Fijian food, because. It was the most basic bread. And all the people went, all the various regions, the north, the west, the south, you know, the east, they have different breads. Uh, tandoori, a naan bread, you know, baked in tandoori oven. Um, the chapati from Gujarat, west, you know, the, the dosa from south. But there's all different breads. Every, every, um, color, you know, there's, Look, how many languages are in India? About 27? Counting English, I guess. But I'd, I'd say they have their own variations and everything. Sure. You know. Telugu is the oldest language in the world, I believe. And that's, you know, down south. The, the Dravidians and the South Indians are the original people of India. And then the North Indians, of which I descend from. Well, they're the invaders. Anyway, so roti was the staple food. It is the, um, it is the bread of <laughs> the lower demographics, you know? Yeah. And then when it, when it went to Fiji, it just, I mean, I would take good roti any day over any of the other breads. 100%. I, it's just, there's, there's something about it, it's earthy. There's an earthiness to roti and, and it, there's a beautiful um, you know, rhythm to, not rhythm, but the, what, you know, us remembering our mothers making the bread yeah, and right. the rolling. I, 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 I rolled roti, um, I rolled it three times in the last two years, um, thinking that, oh, this is great, I really I hate it. I'm really not cut out for all this to cook and stuff. But wow, it's, it's really good for your um, arms. I gotta tell you, biceps and triceps and stuff. Because I, you know, I remember my mother making so many rotis. Sure, yeah. But now I think, holy cow. And we had um, domestic employees. My father was uh, a very prominent person. And, uh, and then later on a parliamentarian and a senator. So we had staff, but... Um, I only want, like, my mother's cooking was something else, and, well, he expected her to cook as a way to dominate a strong woman. Ugh. Look, we're not going to talk about this just yet. But I will be talking about all of these things quite freely, thank you, because we need to. Anyway, roti. So this is why we, um, we have roti, because that was what was available, and the, 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 the flour wasn't available, the ghee wasn't available, although, you know, I don't know what they took with them on their, on their voyage. So this is the other thing, because you need to, the, the elephant in the room is this, that Indo-Fijians are not considered Pacific Islanders. Um, 
when the Polynesians themselves came from East Asia, when everyone really came from that region, and we all, because, and, and you know, the thing is, Pacifica pride themselves rightfully because they navigated their way according to the stars. I mean, what incredible things they did. And voyage through all, first went from, you know, East Asia, which is uh, to Taiwan, to the to Philippines, and then down to the Pacific, you know, and Polynesians, and then they, the Melanesians, etc., which are very different looking people. By the way, Pacific isn't just Polynesia. What people think, like Moana, no. Okay, that is just Polynesia. Pacific is Melanesia, Polynesia, and the American states of Micronesia. Um, so, yeah. We, uh, the Indies voyaged to these Pacific Islands via ship as well. Fiji wasn't the first place the Indians were shipped off to. I believe it was New Caledonia and then Vanuatu, but the Indians there integrated with the locals and there's no specific, there's not a specific Indo um, Vanuatu or Indo uh, New Caledonian, you know, community like there is in Fiji, where it is a specific Indo Fijian community, speak the language, keep up the traditions. Um, the religious festivities have become part of Fiji's festivities. Curry is basically a national food, you know, more, more rightfully so. Um, and temples and mosques and, and uh, all of that are all around Fiji. But it's such a one, what makes Fiji unique is this wealth of multiculturalism and tourism Fijian that idiot CEO, huh, imagine the, the caliber of people you would attract if you used Fiji's multiculturalism, the wealth of it, the, the legacy of ancient history. Duane is also Chinese, part Chinese. I mean, we don't ever talk about the Sino-Fijian um, community, the Chinese community in Fiji. Just, ugh, gosh. We're talking about roti. <laughs> so this is, um, and I, I love, I love this. Now this, is this tower my mother's? I think so, yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah, of course it is. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 you had it. Um, but we had an older one, which was a really um, thick, you know, not yeah. thick, but uh, thick on the outside or something. Cast, yes, right, yes, cast yes, iron. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, my, yes. my mom had one as well. And, um, Bloody weapon. Yeah, I know, right? And, uh, Heavy. Yeah, absolutely. Properly, but oh, they look amazing. So now the curries are what we are going to get on to soon. Dwayne likes to make the rorties first and get them out of the way. And, ah, it looks so good. Um, I'm going to show you. Look, 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 look. Ah, oof. You know, um, by the way, I used to co-own restaurants. And as I said, I really, really understand flavors. Now, when because um, the... <laughs> young people who were our apprentice chefs couldn't handle a successful restaurant, which I made, that restaurant that I managed and co-owned into a success. Dwayne jumped in. And even though he is not a trained chef, when he was studying um, uh, as, a, as a foreign student and studying in Australia, working in restaurants, and some, one of them was a fine dining restaurant, etc. And I should say that your mother is an exceptional cook. Yes. And so you didn't necessarily cook at home. It, it's still like the girls, your sisters learned yeah. at home, right? You didn't. No, I didn't. It was, it was necessity because you missed food. And, uh, well, when I left home, my mom gave me a piece of paper with, a, you know, three or f four or five recipes on it. Curry being one of them. Yes, of sure. course. <laughs> Dal. Yeah. Um, uh, and a couple of chicken dishes and roasts and stuff. And she had all these little... Dry I think I still have a piece of paper. Somewhere. Wonderful. Yeah. She, she's very talented and she's a yeah. writer as well. I mean, yeah. your entire family is just, um, uh, you know, all artisans in some way. Oh, now... So huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what were you saying? So you actually then had... You were forced into it, but it wasn't a difficulty for you. No. You then got intrigued by it all. Although the first... Meal I ever cooked, chicken meal I ever cooked was raw. Sure. And uh, I asked my mom, what did I do wrong? She goes, you should have added water. Okay. And I was like, okay, that's <laughs> simple, you know. <laughs> See, as you say, water. Yeah. Add water. Add water. 
I'm not, I'm not talking about food. I'm talking about to yourself. Add water to yourself. Excuse me. I really do need to have a, have a drink. And um, is, is am I able to turn the? I'm just going to turn the audio off while I gulp this down. Right. Dwayne just said it's a bit hot in here. That's uh, because we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm in my 50s. <laughs> By now, I can say this stuff. Um, okay, so we've got uh, Rorty's done. Mm -hmm. Notice the we. <laughs> uh, what were we talking about? So, and then you picked up a lot from the restaurants you worked for as a, as a student yeah. and thrown in the deep end at one restaurant where the chef quit and then the owner just said, okay, you take over. And then you had to. Well, I had to. Mm. Yeah. And I think I love that. That's what I had said about throwing you in the deep end of everything. You are so good with change. You're the most adaptable person I know. Most of us have a real problem getting out of our comfort zones. And that's why where change becomes very difficult for us. I know I'm like that, uh, but uh, but when I adapt to it, it's like, oh, I love this. This is great. Why not change with cock <laughs> kind of thing, yeah. you know? But up till this, I don't want to change. Don't want to do it. Don't want to do it. But anyway, um, so again, gosh, talking about rotis and food, etc. So yes, I I I find that um, amazing. But up till then, most people didn't realize that you could cook more than chicken curry. Everyone loves your chicken curry. <laughs> But I'm amazed at how you, anything you make is absolutely amazing. So this is what I was talking about. That we actually are starting a cat our catering again. I don't know why, because it's really hard work. <laughs> so I'm not sure I want to actually say anything about that. Because what don't, you know, well, well might as well here be, uh, do this. It's our channel. We can do this. We are also... Um, we do other things. I do astropsychology charts. Yeah, I do. Because, well, I um, people intrigue me and I'm nosy about everyone. And uh, Dwayne, being an artist, one of his genres, being a, a, a comic book illustrator, is uh, one of the things uh, he does is create comic book covers according to your personality. And um, if you go looking amongst all our, you know, links, etc., you'll find all those. So anyway, so now what, my darling? You're going to make curries. Yeah, I'm just wiping everything down. Give me a, do a couple of minutes to set up. Sure. Um, I don't really want to be too long here, so I wish we could pause this, but I don't think we can. And that's a bit of a bummer. Okay, right, how do we pause that? Oh, I can't. Damn. Should we be able to pause the recording so that you know we can just start recording? when you've got all the curry things ready, because I really don't want to be longer than one and a half hours here. All right, should we come back maybe? For the curry? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so this I is the rorty side of things. I can yes. prep everything. Yeah, then, great. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like a plan, and then I can, you know, really just figure out what I'm talking about with the, with the curries. Yeah, but sure. I do want to talk about the curries, because um, how they differ from what people know curries to be, and how um, indo fijian curries are earthier, but lighter, and, you know, mm -hmm. I think um, we'll talk about that. But yeah, thank you very that. much for being here for this part one of today's The Feed. And we'll be, we'll be back very shortly with the curry side of things. Okay, bye. How do I do this? Okay, back. <laughs> yes, I do want to stop streaming for now. Please stop.